May I please welcome you today uh, for BEDCO session, where today our interest is on e-commerce. My name is Ntepensi uh, Tatikiso. I'm the co-founder of the group of companies. Um, I also did a BSc Computer Science and Statistics at the National University of Lesotho prior to proceeding with a master's degree in business administration. Today, we are here uh, uh, to discuss issues related to e-commerce in our country. And I should mention that we will be having uh, three panels where the first panel will be focusing mainly on what e-commerce uh, can do for Lesotho. Uh, the second panel, that will start from 10, from 10, 15 a.m. will be focusing on uh, the type of support that is required to grow the e-commerce landscape in Lesotho. And uh, the third panel that will start at um, nine, sorry, that will start at 11.30 a.m. will be on online transacting we will be appreciating how to integrate mobile money with e-commerce uh, payments. This is a very important topic because we are now in the era of technology. We have been forced by circumstances of which we saw even during the era of um, the, the, the advent of uh, COVID-19, which forced us to to adopt different methodologies that can still help us uh, progress in our business landscape, which is something that we figured it was not the norm, but right now it is. For example, we are all gathered here on our different uh, platforms, but we are together in a meeting, in a session to discuss e-commerce for Lesotho. So I find this very, very intriguing. And um, we have about seven, we have about eight panelists. We have um, Mrs. Marame Matela. I understand uh, Mayor Matutu will be presenting on her behalf. And then we also have uh, Ndade Tebohom Klanga. And then we also have Ndade Mudupi Mutepu. And then we also have Ndade Mukheti Letela, Ndade Naokulube, Met Hato Soping. Uh, the three of them, the, the three panels will be discussing the different topics that I have mentioned. So before uh, wasting any more time, um, may I please welcome our panelists for the very first session. The first session will be concentrating, like I said earlier, on e-commerce in Lesotho as we have the current status and readiness of trading online. This is what we, we want to understand, how the MSMEs uh, can actually make use of technology and what it holds for them. So um, I, I, as I mentioned, I have three panelists. We have Ndate Naokolobe, he's the Managing Director of NG Data where they deal with project management, software engineering, business process re-engineering, web technologies, server architecture, IT architecture specialties. In general, we are referring to software engineering. May I please uh, welcome you to open the floor by already engaging in the topic that we have, which is e-commerce for Lesotho. And in the interim, I should mention that he will be opening, but there are two more panelists. Uh, that will be uh, Mema Me Me Kutu from LCA, and that there will also be Ndate Seeta Matiti uh, from Africa Best Traders. So Ndate now, can you just, with that opening, can you just uh, give us a brief of what you have prepared for us today? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, um, I would like to uh, share a presentation, um, if that's okay. Yes, please. Okay. You have the option, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank you.
can everyone see the shared screen? Yes, it's very clear, Dr. Please proceed. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Neo Kulube. I come from NG Data, as it has been mentioned. Um, basically, uh, just to give you uh, a little introduction about us, uh, we started operations in 2006. Uh, we have about 16 full time staff members um, and a number of consultants. Um, and we have uh, extensive partnerships um, throughout the world and in the Soto. And as mentioned, our, our core business is um, application development, um, especially focusing on web-based web applications. We also do managed services where we <clears throat> support uh, data centers. Anyway, uh, let me dive in uh, to basically just to give a definition of what e-commerce is. Um, it's basically doing business uh, online uh, using the internet. And there are several components that are required there. Uh, basically, we have to have a chat where people can be able to see those products, select them, uh, have the option of paying. But most importantly, um, as a trader, you, you have to be able to deliver uh, those products and have an inventory that, that will, will actually uh, uh, support that. Um, if you try to look at the, the usage uh, uh, or the penetration of internet in, uh, in the whole world, we can see that uh, Africa is still a little bit behind, but we are getting there. In fact, <clears throat> um, a good thing to note is that uh, about 37% of our population are actually very much active on uh, mobile uh, broadband subscriptions. And um, ANTAC actually did uh, uh, a very extensive research uh, on that in terms of readiness uh, of, of Lesotho for e-commerce. Um, I think we, we, we are rated at around uh, one, 126 out of 52 uh, countries that were, were, were looked into. Um, but in terms of uh, our postal uh, index, uh, the UPU has rated us 138 over 172. That is the, the efficiency, uh, you know, resilience, resilience and uh, reach of our postal services in order to service uh, deliveries and stuff like that. Anyway, uh, the uh, UNTAD uh, um, index was basically based on the ICT infrastructure, uh, you know, the trade and uh, logistics facilitations, um, the payment solutions that we currently have, uh, the legal and regulatory framework, and of course, the, the actual e-commerce skills uh, that we have. But having said that, it is actually getting better. It is getting better because uh, we now have a culture where we use mobile money uh, to transact. And that is very, very important considering that now our banks are actually now supporting this whole initiative of mobile money uh, by enabling uh, mobile money and banks to transact. So now you are able to move your money into uh, uh, your from your bank account to into your mobile uh, money account. And uh, some of the banks actually now have a vice versa uh, move where you can actually now deposit money from your mobile money into your bank account. And that is that is very, very, very uh, uh, interesting. Uh, if you come to think of some of the initiatives that are now currently being taken. And I'll, uh, I'll dive into some of the, the examples of uh, people who are already uh, leapfrogging into, into this sector uh, by giving examples. If you, 
um, think about the 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 website black hair. Um, I know I don't have hair, <laughs> but uh, uh, um, I'm exposed to people who buy uh, products uh, uh, on that particular website, and they do it online. Uh, they are able to pay using uh, mobile money and the conventional um, um, uh, EFTs. But if you look at Waimi Chuns, Waimi Chuns uh, is actually one of, I can say, uh, organizations that are actually revolutionizing or have revolutionized the way we see um, e-commerce in the suit. Because now you are able to uh, buy songs uh, online using mobile money. And the difference here is that there's seamless integration. So you get onto the website, select a song, pay, and immediately uh, get access to that particular uh, uh, song. Uh, in fact, I, I, I recently downloaded um, Sidimu's um, uh, song, uh, I think two weeks back, where I was just able to click on, the, on that particular song uh, use my uh, Mpesa account, um, just popped up on my phone, put in the password, and voila, uh, I, got, I got that. Now, <clears throat> uh, some of those players are actually um, supporting uh, the e-business um, initiative, like uh, the doorstep deliveries. Doorstep deliveries is a, is a company in the sort of that uh, delivers uh, um, products and uh, if i give you an example uh, if you buy a product from black hair then doorsteps will come to your, to your house and and deliver that particular product as a company we have also been involved in some of those initiatives like for example uh, there's a there's a spot fine system that road fund is currently running for road offenders and there was a challenge in terms of payments and uh, we designed a solution for them to be able to receive payments through uh, uh, mobile money. So when you have a, a ticket, uh, you can just use a USSD code, put in your ticket number, um, and then uh, your ticket will be now cleared after you, you pay. But one of the, I suppose, interesting companies, Jumia, um, uh, they call it the, the Alibaba of Africa, uh, has actually taken advantage of uh, a space in Africa where conventional e-commerce businesses would not really like to venture into. Uh, as you know, uh, addressing in, in, in Africa, physical addressing in Africa is quite a challenge, uh, but they have been able to put an infrastructure that will allow products and services to be, to be delivered in some of the most remote areas uh, uh, in Africa. It's a very, very interesting case. Um, having given these examples to, to, to showcase and, and, and state that actually we, despite, you know, the restrictions that we have uh, and uh, in terms of infrastructure, legal frameworks and stuff like that, uh, there are those early who, who have started now taking advantage of e-commerce and it, it is working. Uh, I, suppose one of the, I suppose one of the questions then would be, can, can a guy in the streets who's selling t-shirts be able to, to take advantage of, of e-commerce uh, today? Uh, certainly with the, with the introduction of, of, of mobile money, uh, that is quite a, a, a possibility, and I, I, I suppose the, 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 the technical complexities uh, have somehow been removed by that introduction, because we know that uh, only about, what, 9% of us here in Lesotho have credit cards. Uh, so it, it, it's quite, it's, it would be quite a challenge if mobile money wasn't here to make that. So. Uh, I think I'll, I'll conclude my, my short presentation by saying, yes, we are ready. Uh, not everything is perfect, but we can definitely leapfrog into e-commerce. Um, thank you very much. Um, th thank you so much, Ndata Nail, for that uh, 
presentation about Lesotho's readiness on e-commerce. I heard you, you mentioned that uh, right now people can use Mbesa to, to buy YME tunes, which you have done yourself. So it's testimony that it's something that is viable. You also mentioned that uh, right now people can pay their spot fines uh, through mobile money, if I heard you correctly, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, so, true. yes. Fact, that so, was one of our, um, oh, sorry for interrupting. That was, no, it's fine. That, Go ahead. That's one of the projects that we, we are very proud of uh, because it brought so much convenience to offenders. Uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, you can only pay for spot fine at sub accountancies and, and LRA. But by introducing spot fines, we saw a huge peak of uh, payments being done after hours, during weekends, holidays, and stuff like that. And that is actually the way to go in terms of that, because e-commerce by itself offers that convenience of, 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 of people being able to buy and transact, um, even in different time zones uh, in, in real life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ndatineo. Um, I, I have a number of questions, but I'm actually thinking it's important maybe to let other panelists uh, do their presentations first so that we can engage into further discussions uh, at a later stage. And I saw saying, may I please uh, take this moment now to welcome uh, Dr. Dukukule Maltudu. Uh, she'll be representing uh, Mema Marane Madela on behalf of LCA. And uh, the, the discussion is still the same. We are talking uh, e-commerce for Lesotho. Is Lesotho ready for e-commerce? And now we are getting it from perspective of LCA. Uh, Mema Kudu, welcome. Uh, can you enable, your mic is on? Yes, yes. Um, okay. Oh, thank you so much, May. Can you please uh, proceed and uh, tell us about yourself first and then proceed to the discussions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Sepeng. Um, my name is um, Dipukule Makutu. I work at LCA, um, but my background is in, in statistics. I I have a PhD in statistics. I worked at NAL um, for quite some time teaching statistics, but now I'm uh, in the research division at, at LCA. Um, and I would like to apologize to the viewers that I, uh, I do not really have a presentation, but I think I will be very short in terms of um, the presentation in terms of the, 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 the current status and the readiness of uh, uh, trading online in Lesotho. What the perspective that we, 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 we looked at it from was just looking at the, at the current status. Uh, we looked at the availability of, of the infrastructure to the, the um, internet infrastructure. We can see that at least from where we are standing, more than 90% of the populated areas are covered by 3G in Lesotho. And to be more specific, we are aware that 98% uh, of our populated areas are covered by 3G. And uh, by March um, 2020, 4G had also uh, covered uh, about 67% of our population. In other words, what we are trying to say is that now as Lesotho, we are, we are moving towards universal access. Almost all of us are, have access to, to, to internet. But what we are seeing from the perspective of consumers who are the ones that are going to consume um, the, the the products from the businesses. We noted in our study uh, in 2019 that only about 42% of individuals are online. That is about 42% use internet. And that translates to saying that at this point, 
current status is that about 58% of our people are not, are not using internet. And this goes further to even reveal that in the urban areas, we have 63% that uh, do use internet, while only 29% of our population in the rural areas use internet. So we, we have a gap of about, urban rural gap of about 34%, and, and that is still quite high. Our point here is, is that as much as we have the available infrastructure, the adoption rate is still very low. And what we have discovered was that, is that because of lack of skills, um, that's why people are not, the reasons that they were giving was that they, they, they don't know what internet is, they, they're not interested, but you could see that this is because of, of, of lack of skills. The other thing that we have also noted was that there is lack of trust to use internet, particularly when it also comes to doing business online. Um, our culture is such that we still do not really trust doing a, a business online. And, and, and from that perspective, yes, we see that the horizon is wide. We can use Facebook to advertise um, for small businesses. And these days there's also um, a WhatsApp that uh, uh, people can WhatsApp small businesses with. Not to mention the fact that there is mobile money, even though we still see the adoption is increasing, but it's not yet, um, it's just slightly above 50%. So we still have to uh, increase the use of mobile money too to help businesses. But all in all, what we are, we are seeing is that if we could um, uh, work on the cybersecurity policy, and the Lesotho electronic transfers, I mean, Lesotho electronic transactions and electronic commerce bill. Maybe those are some of the things that could help to increase the uptake of, of internet use, usage by, by consumers so that even businesses included, the they, they, they use of internet could be, oh, sorry. Uh, the use of internet could be even wider. Uh, I think with those few words, um, with those few words, I think um, that's that's really our our presentation in this regard. Thank you, Mente Ben. Thank you so much, uh, Mente Kukule. I, I forgot to mention to to the viewers that uh, firstly, that Neo was, was my colleague at Computer Business Solutions. Now I also forgot to mention that uh, Dr. Dipukule was my teacher, my lecturer at the National University of Lesotho. <laughs> I think I should mention those two. I, I feel honored that we are actually having this discussion in this manner today. Okay, um, I think I have one interesting question, especially for LCA, because uh, the, you mentioned that uh, while we have internet coverage, true enough, but there is low adoption of the very internet that we're mentioning, and, and you further mentioned that uh, in the rural areas, uh, it's, the situation is even worse because we just have about 29% usage. And I, I would like to know, why, why do you feel, I, I understand you mentioned that maybe there's lack of uh, education about internet usage and the likes, but do you feel there's a way that we can intervene or something can be done right now so that the rural space can adopt internet the same way as the, the, the urban area is adopting internet? Oh, yes, thank you, ma'am. Um, I think as, as LCA um, um, right now, we are, we are really looking at that, that gap and we are trying to, to widen, I mean, to, to, narrow, to narrow the urban rural, the urban rural gap by deploying the, the infrastructure, which now we are satisfied that 
almost everyone has has coverage except a few you know uh, hiccups here and there but i think we one of the long term uh, goals of lca was that if we could uh, empower teachers at at schools and have a project where we teach teachers to with regard to um, uh, digital skills so that it's transferred to 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 students then we'll have a society where we have um, children uh, who are growing up um, with this required required skills regardless of whether they are in urban or rural areas so particularly we are targeting the the rural schools and we also did have a do have a project where we are um, um, uh, trying to make sure that schools do have internet so in in our case i think specifically we were looking at long term um, uh, um, results but in the in the medium to short term i think lca is, will still uh, advise itself how how it can uh, mitigate the the, the the circumstance because I think we are still discussing the latest results of our reports. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. I, I, another question just for you before we move on to, to the next uh, panelist. Um, this platform is where MSMEs throughout the country are engaging with uh, the specialists or the technocrats in various areas to appreciate how they can make use of e-commerce in Lesotho. Now, uh, there are some terminologies that you used that I feel maybe it would be wise to elaborate what that means. For example, you mentioned that uh, there's 3G and then there's 4G. Of course, you mentioned the coverage issue that 3G is at 98% while 4G was at 67% in March. One would ask, want to ask, what, do, what are these Gs? What, what do they do? <laughs> Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Mr. Ping. Um, I mean, explaining it also not from the um, very technological uh, perspective. When we started with the, uh, uh, you know, this technology, I think there was a, a 2G, which it's just two generation, they call it 2G generational um, technology to uh, it, it just basically covered a uh, voice, voice mm -hmm. technology where we didn't have internet at all. So the next level was to have the 3G, which now covered both the voice where we, we used to make calls and then the internet. Then I think they're improving generations like that. Now we have the later generation, which is the 4G. It, 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 I think it's, it's about speed and capacity and so on, which is now covering almost 67%. And if you remember, there is now a, a 5G, which is even much faster, but for Lesotho, we are still piloting it. Most countries uh, do, not, do not have it yet. But by 3G, it just means now we, had, we have voice coverage and internet coverage. Okay. No, thank you so much, Mayor, about that. Uh, of course, we will also be engaging with Vodacom Lesotho. They will clarify further how they have been implementing that uh, in the Lesotho landscape. Um, at this moment, uh, I'd like to reserve any other, any other comments so that we can move to our third panelist uh, for this uh, first uh, session. And here we are talking about Udadese Adamante, who is uh, a software engineer. Uh, he's the co-founder of ABT, My Wallet, Lesotho, and an executive within Mozi Group focused on building system integration uh, capabilities. At software engineering by training, he has applied his experience, his experience in a number of clients. He's a software engineer striving to build immense and beautiful softwares through carefully crafted code and user-centric design, project management and team leading experience. Seata Madita holds a BSc honors in information technology. 
In the past seven years, uh, he's worked for companies in Lesotho and South Africa, such as ABI, MTN, Vodacom, GSK, Twinsaver, and Samsung. One of his softwares was chosen as the most interactive design in Block, ha block Hackathon, Narija, Japan in 2014, and the most secure mobile banking systems by Hackathon San Francisco, California, USA in 2016. By saying that, may we please uh, take this moment to welcome Ndadamatit, please welcome. Um, thank you so much, uh, Metida. Let me see if you can... Let me see if I can share my screen quickly with you. All right. All right. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think I can explain myself more. Uh, you already said a lot. Uh, I'm set on my to like it's displayed on the screen and uh, the introduction also uh, said it all. So um, I'm here to talk about uh, the two issues um the readiness of Lesotho in trading online and how the uh, MS MSMEs in Lesotho can leapfrog into the adoption of e-commerce. So um, we are the best uh, Africa best traders. Uh, we started the company in 2018. Uh, we came as a group of Basotho uh, from different um, uh, fields. Uh, trying to make sure that we don't leave every, anyone. Uh, we took the engineers, we have the, uh, the crafting people, we've got uh, technology people, we've got most of the people that are in our, in our team, basically. We, we try to make sure that we touch every corner so that we can build a comprehensive solution for, um, for, for our country, Lesotho. So now, um, are we ready as Lesotho to trade online? So what is e-commerce? Uh, if I may uh, explain that quickly. Um, and now, how can it help us? Um, and then also, how does it work as well? So e-commerce is an activity of electronically buying and selling of products online. So this means uh, first of all, you need to be computer illiterate, <laughs> basically, uh, for you to partake into, into this space. So now, the way it works, e-commerce, is you need to have um, a platform. A platform um, uh, can be a website, uh, it can be your USSD, it can be an app. So this is where now your clients or the customers will be interacting with uh, the products that you'll, be, that you'll be selling. So now, number two is, now you have to make sure that people can buy on the platform. Uh, this is where now we're gonna talk about your method of uh, collections. How do you get the money? Because the reason why we are into business is to make money at the end of the day. So, now you need to make sure that your solution or your platform can accept the payments. Uh, now you need to pay the suppliers as well. Um, most of the people normally argue that you need to do it vice versa. You need to let people deliver first and then you pay them after. But that will take um, um, uh, the integrity and the way you structured your business. But the normal flow is that you pay the, the supplier and then now you deliver. So now, um, what are the key, the reason why I'm, I'm bringing this is to answer the readiness of, of, um, of, of us, Lesotho, um, and then see that, um, are we ready? Are we ready to partake into e-commerce? So now, looking at the, at the, at, the, at the drivers of e-commerce, which is um, the operations. Um, we're checking at the widespread uh, or the wider customer reach. Uh, are we able to develop these things uh, in the country? Are we able to use them? Uh, and again, the internet penetration, 
someone from my place, um, I'm from the rural of Lesotho. So I can assure you that from my place, uh, which is the most rural, I think, in Lesotho, I can access everything that you can do in Maseru. So this means, yes, we are ready. We've got the payment platforms because uh, e-commerce, you need to also uh, get the money from people or from your customers. You make sure that you collect the money so that you can facilitate everything. So it means now we've got the banks at home. We've got uh, the mobile money uh, issuers that can help us to make sure that we fast track uh, the processes. So um, I would say, yes, we are ready. Um, one of the speakers yesterday, Tate Kham, was saying um, Kodak uh, was the first company that came up with um, a, a, a digital camera. But now they pegged it aside to say, no, uh, the market is not ready yet for this product. But someone came and then overtook them. So um, I would say this is the time as well. We are ready to partake into uh, e-commerce space. So now, how can the MS, uh, MS, uh, MSMEs leapfrog into the adoption of e-commerce? First of all, um, the e-commerce, what can it do for small entrepreneurs? Um, it can allow them to actually go beyond the markets, the local markets. It can also allow them to go beyond national markets. It can also allow them to go even uh, beyond the regional markets as well. So by, by, by having all that, it means now you need to also learn something. I, I always stress on people learning. You need to at least have an idea of what you are dealing with. Uh, don't just jump because someone down the street is doing the same thing uh, uh, that other people are doing and then you want to imitate them. Uh, learn first. Um, so it means now you have to um, have computer literacy, like I said on my, uh, on my previous slide. And again, introduce your suppliers to e-commerce. Uh, show them the importance of them onboarding on e-commerce uh, and also teach them as well. Um, again, talk about availability. You need to be online. Uh, you're dealing with the online platform, so you need to be available. I'm not saying you should be always on, in front of the computer, but there are ways of supporting your business. You need to be available, just like when you have a brick and mortar um, type of a business. You need to be there at the office. You need to make sure that all the operations are happening. So uh, even on online as well, you don't start a business and then you, you walk away. You're thinking that everything is just gonna automate itself. No, that's not how it works. You need to be available to support the clients. Uh, the other thing is to have a reliable telecommunication service. If people can not reach you, then you don't have business. Uh, learn about cybersecurity law and the contract as well. Um, having knowledge about uh, uh, anything can actually help you to, to help your customers to, to, to understand what you're trying to achieve. So most of the people are not safe, basically. They, they don't even wanna buy anything online because they're thinking that they're gonna be scammed or something. But if you teach them and then you make sure that they understand uh, that you know what you're trying to do, then it will also give you an advantage as a small uh, entrepreneur. And again, um, set up a very friendly website. The navigation, attractive. I mean, no one wants to uh, look at a very uh, bad designed uh, interface. Um, that they, uh, sorry, I forgot his name, but and that was engine data. He mentioned, uh, this website, uh, why my tunes? Yes, I also saw that. I just uh, came across it, and I was able to also. I didn't buy, but I saw that it's very easy. You you choose a song, then you 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 choose the method of payment, and then you pay. Download your your music. 
that is very innovative. And again, um, set up a very good and cheaper payment gateway. Most of the people, when they get into e-commerce, they are thinking that they will do cash on delivery. Um, cash on delivery, it, it, it might not be that safe because when you get there with all the stock, I might tell you that I made a mistake. I don't need those things anymore. So it means immediately when someone likes something on your platform, let them buy it by having um, a very user-friendly way of paying. Uh, the last point uh, that I have also, you need to know the moment you jump into the e-commerce, it means now you are actually opening um, uh, the, the global markets basically. So it means now you need to also understand how other uh, countries are dealing with e-commerce. You need to understand the trade policies, the intellectual property and the taxes, et cetera. And again, the last one, you need to also make sure that after you sell, there is a proper customer uh, relationship management that you need to, now you need to supply uh, and then make sure that you support after you supply. And also make sure that someone feels safe. If I bought something from your, your platform, make sure that I feel safe and I know that I'll get my products. I don't have to buy something and then you are quiet. Uh, the whole 10 days and then on the 11th day now you call me. You need to keep me uh, in, a, in a proper or informal language. They are saying you're keeping someone warm. So you need to keep the customers warm as well. I thank you. Um, about uh, that, that presentation coming from your angle and your, your experience about uh, issues related to e-commerce. I love the fact that you, you mentioned very importantly that a reliable connection is, is very important. And maybe I'm just going to throw to the three of you to give us your experience about the reliability of connectivity here in Lesotho. And uh, furthermore, you also mentioned the issue of, of oh, okay, actually it was mentioned by Dr. Dibukula, but I think it also applies here because we are talking, uh, mobilizing your money online, the issue of, of cyber security. Still, I want to know what do we say about the Lesotho status quo? And um, what you mentioned that is very key also is that uh, support, support is very important. Support is very important in any kind of business. Now, when it's online, I'll say it even advances uh, the requirements because now you are not even interacting directly with this person, but you have to ensure that they trust you with the product or service that you have, you have given to them. So maybe you can start by, by commenting on the issue of internet uh, reliability here in Lesotho? Because our topic is, is Lesotho ready for e-commerce? What can you say about that? All right, yes. Um, uh, um, uh, Dr. Kolobe, I think, Mewa um, LCA. The Kukuli, yes. yes. There's, <laughs> there's Ndate Kulube and then there's Dr. Kukuli. <laughs> yes. So uh, uh, they've got proper statistics and whatever uh, that, he was, that she was saying also is uh, we are ready, if I can just sum up what, uh, what she was saying. So it means if in all the districts and even in rural places, that we have in Lesotho, you can have 3G. Um, I mean, it's it. Uh, you can you can almost do everything with 3G. And if she's saying by next year, then most of the uh, 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 the places also will be covered on 4G. So it means we are progressing, and I'll say we are ready. Um, um, we we are ready, basically. Okay. Um now, just to, to give clarity on this issue that we are ready, I appreciate the fact that you are emphasizing, tell me 
I'm a small business, uh, I'm starting to operate and I'm being told, no, you can operate online. I mean, how, how do you convince me that this is actually the way to go in terms of requirements? Because sometimes we're just worried because of the cost factor that we are not even aware of. So how do you ease a small business owner to say you can also be part of the e-commerce platform? <clears throat> Thank you, Ma. Um, whatever as, as Ndade has, has said, uh, you can almost do anything with uh, 3G. Um, and what is, what is important now is that the, um, the type of connection that we have across the country and access thereof uh, has improved drastically uh, in the past few years. Um, the, that's <laughs> why we that fear. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Let me. Uh, can we please mute our mics, everyone? Please. May we please mute our mics? Thank you. Proceed with that. Yes. Uh, that 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 fear of of getting into um, e-commerce, both as a as a consumer and as a, as a service provider uh, must diminish. Uh, I'm saying must diminish because I know that and I'm aware that it is still there. People think of all these complexities when they think of, 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 of running their businesses online. And I can, I can say, you know, uh, in my opinion, the, the, the improvement of mobile money has made everything possible because if you really think of it, a lot of transactions are already happening on mobile money platforms. It's just that some of those um, small businesses just need to add that particular leg of, of getting those products or services on a, on a website, organized, and then integrate uh, with the already existing services that they're using on mobile money. So, um, I don't know what to say on this particular issue really, except that we are ready and um, things that used to be deterrents for, for us to, to get into this have, have basically diminished uh, uh, really. Um, from a, a, a software development uh, perspective, uh, getting a website with a chart of products and uh, having a checkout where you have options of paying uh, using the conventional credit card or, or mobile money, it, it has become very, very affordable, uh, such that even small businesses can leap into this. Thank you very much. I'll be guided by more questions later. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think I want to go back to the issue that we still have a lot of uh, services being provided, I'll say manually here in Lesotho. In fact, when you look in the public sector, well, we give bravo to, to the issue of road funds, even though it's not necessarily inherent in within the core public sector. But I want to know, because we get a number of services from the public sector in, in the essence of enabling the ground for business. So how do you think the advent of e-commerce should also be integrated in within the public sector of Lesotho to help uh, MSMEs? I'll, I'll make an example. And um, when you apply for a business, when you apply a, for a business, yes, online, everything else, yes, you can still do online, but you still need to do that payment, you know, such areas. So I want to know where, where money is concerned and the services that we are saying we can get them online, but you still have to do the payment. How do you think that should be? work on uh, as far as maybe policies concern, or maybe not just po policy, just having enablers working together, who is needed to ensure that this platform is, is enabled. We have you as software developers, Trina, but we also have the MSMEs. What, what role should they be playing? Or is it a matter of that, that uh, we don't have enough advocacy at the moment to declare that now we really want an e-commerce platform, maybe even in comparison to other, to other countries. Uh, I'd like to, to get a comment uh, on that note so that we, we, we appreciate where, if we are saying we are still okay with the current status quo, we are ready. Yes, we are ready, but 
I want us to say, but for us to be there, this is what is needed. What, what I comment on, on that note, this I'm throwing to all the three panelists. Um, I... Okay, let me let me take it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to peek now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, you, you, you see, um, at first, I remember when the spot fine system got live, people started being issued tickets electronically, mm. um, started paying, you know, at various points, physical various points using cash. Um, and then there was this idea of, well, uh, we can introduce uh, mobile payments on this. And it was scary at first to say, wow, how do we get a government institution receiving money through um, uh, a mobile uh, platform? Because remember, um, even from the beginning, uh, it was not taken seriously, let me put it like that, uh, for serious things to do, uh, where you can actually pay for a fine. Uh, that can, if you don't pay, you can go to jail. And then now you are saying you can use mobile money to, to pay for that fine. Um, but yet, once it was adopted, uh, it was in partnership with um, NGData and Econet, uh, uh, that, that platform for, for paying uh, mobile uh, um, spot fines. Uh, when it was um, adopted, people were still a little bit re uh, reluctant. But now, uh, I, the, the, the rate of payments of uh, spot fine tickets via mobile money has more than doubled uh in the last couple of months and that is huge um uh, considering that it is a government institution so i think it is slow yes admittedly it is very slow for government to adopt mobile money uh, as, a, as a as a serious payment method but we are getting there at least we have seen now one institution has already done it thank you okay Thank you. Maybe still on the same token, but maybe I'll throw it to Ndadima Diki this time because you picked this one. And uh, we are talking about the, the four pillars on SDG, sorry, the four pillars on NSDP2, not SDG, so on S NSDP2, where there's agriculture. And I'm mentioning agriculture because I recall there was a session where I attended where it showed that for one to get, say, a license about something in relation to agriculture or to just even import something, they, we have to walk from one office to the other. Now, there's this issue of e-commerce where we are saying we could you could literally just be sitting in your office and do any, everything that is public sector related. My concern is there because you find that a number of things are stuck in within the public sector. And I'm glad that this session is being held by Betco because VETCO now has the obligation to discuss with the ministry on how these issues can be, can be resolved. So I'm saying you'll find that one hops from one office to the other. Now, coming from a, from a, a, a business perspective, you find that you spend a lot of money, you spend a lot of time, sometimes you are not even assisted on time. So uh, that how do you, how, how, how do you see e-commerce helping us in this regard? Uh, thanks a lot. Um, you know, it's, uh, sometimes when you when you even apply for a very small thing um, at home, you need to run around, and then sometimes you meet people that don't even know what you are looking for. So, mm -hmm. the good thing about uh, uh, having the online services is that you don't have to interact with a human being. So that means the error free is less because now everything can be automated. I was impressed last month when uh, LRA was, was, was uh, launching one of their online platforms. That was very cool. And I wish everyone can actually follow the path because uh, COVID has showed us that uh, you don't need to be at a specific place for you to access the services, but you can do everything while you are at home, uh, uh, just get a laptop or your phone and make sure that you can connect on internet and then you get the, uh, the, service, uh, the services that you want. So the government as well, uh, it, it has to involve 
it has to involve uh, the, the small entrepreneurs to showcase what they can do as well. Because we, we've got the fresh minds. Uh, you've got companies like NG Data that has a whole lot of uh, uh, systems that we are actually looking up to. Uh, so it actually shows that we as a, as a, as a country and as, as uh, small entrepreneurs and also as the business people in Lesotho, we are capable of delivering the services online. The only thing that we have to do and that we have to develop is trust. People should trust the online platforms. Okay, thank you so much. And in fact, when you talk about the issue of trust, now I go back uh, to Dr. Dipokole because I know she mentioned the issue of uh, addressing cyber security and the issue of policy being, 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 being addressed as far as electronic uh, transactions are concerned. So maybe you can just tell me, where are we in Lesotho as far as these stages are concerned right now? Where are we? Thank you very much, May. Um, I was trying to unmute my video. Uh, uh, thank you very much, May. Um, with regard to the, 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 the two policies, particularly, I think LCA participated in the one of the cybersecurity uh, policy. There are still um, drafts that are waiting to go to parliament or something, but um, I think from our side, in, indeed, we are seeing that this needs to be pushed through our parent, our parent ministry, so that they can, um, you know, be policies, not drafts, as 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 it, it as it were now. Uh, so we believe that once the, the the policies are passed, then the adoption or lack of trust, as we said, uh, doing business online would would be much 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 better. But I think that is one of the aims of uh, LCA um, in this current fiscal year to try to uh, negotiate or work with our current ministry so that these policies are passed by, by, by government. Um, can I also uh, touch a little bit on uh, public e-government services? E yes, yes, yes. Uh, we, we also had done a, a study last year, uh, pre-COVID, um, looking at the readiness of government in terms of delivering services online or on a electronic platform. And uh, our results also revealed that we still have a, a long way to a long way to go because you would what we found, for instance, was that um, at, at least about 20% of the institutions, public service institutions, because by public service institu institutions, we mean both the ministries and parastatals, about 20% of them offer at least one service online. So we still have uh, about 80% uh, of them that did not have any, any service that they offered online. But again, what we noted was that most of them do have websites where people could access information, but again, they still do not have, um, um, you know, platforms where the public could download forms and fill whatever you want to fill and upload them back to, to them for to get that, that particular service. So even those that have websites, about only 14% of them, um, the public could download websites I mean, could download forms from their website and also about 5% where the public could fill in the forms and upload them again on the website so that the service could, could start running. But what we, we, we noted um, a little bit more was that in most uh, public service offices, there are no IT personnel. You'd find them in headquarters, that is in Maseru, but when you go to the districts, they don't have any any technical support, any support on, on, on these things. And also we lack of skills again in, in, in the public sector. I think that was, it, it's one of the things that we, we, we noted. So from the supply side, because the public service has to, they have to supply, you know, the services online, we still have a long way to go, I think, because 
as much as we could find that most offices do have computers, but they did also have internet, especially as you go outside, outside Maseru. I think that's, that's my remark there that there's a lot that still needs to be done so that we have services online, which will facilitate the e-commerce um, uptake again, I think. Maybe Thanks. just a, a, a question there. Those who you said didn't have computers or didn't have internet, is it because of lack of appreciation of what uh, that equipment or services can do for them? Or, I mean, I, I want to understand why, why that is the situation. I, I think I'm saying this because I want to go back to the issue that Ndatina had mentioned of computer literacy. So I want to know, as you stood to, is it is the problem that we are not educating our citizens well enough to appreciate what internet is all about, what computers are all about, or they have been taught, but it, maybe it's the issue of change management, or maybe they don't even know at all. So which one is that, uh, if you, you managed to get that information? Oh, thank you, thank you, May. Um, what what we, we did was to, go throughout um, throughout Lesotho and we treated the um, institutions in the districts as independent samples because if, if we are talking about Ministry of Trade, we just didn't treat it as one, one um, a big ministry because you find that most things are in Maseru, but as you go to the district, you don't find anything. But what we learned was that, yes, there are computers and they are working in most um, um, institutions. But when it comes to use staff using computers, you'd find that uh, just only about 64% use, use computers. And when you try to ask, it, the, the, the question is still lack of, lack of skills. But what was more apparent was that most institutions did not have internet connectivity particularly in the district. So the office is there, but you know, people are using their own cell phones, their own, laptops. they don't, laptops, they, they don't have internet in their office because one, sometimes they, or the, 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 the internet was not paid for, or sometimes they've moved places, so they have not been connected yet. And a, a couple of other, other, other reasons. So that, that's where we realized that particularly, you know, you remember I talked about the urban rural differential and in terms of public service, we realized that headquarters and other districts, districts. Mm -hmm. a huge, huge difference because when you looked at Maseru, which we called the headquarters because most offices has headquarters are based in Maseru, all of the institutions had internet. But mm -hmm. going back to the districts, it, it was about about forty three percent that that had internet. So I, I think our 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 recommendation was just for us to see SLCA how we can help and increase internet connectivity, for instance, in at the district level, uh, so that it could come up to at least fifty percent. But that is still being worked on. Thank you. This, this, this information that you have just given, it's quite um, appalling. And, and I should say that because it, it really reflects on why this, the statistics that you mentioned, as in why we have only 29% rural uh, use of, of internet. You pick from here that if you don't have uh, the, the district uh, ministry, the, the the offices in the districts, the ministerial offices in the districts using the internet. Then by default, it says even that uh, the, the population in those areas, they are also not using the internet because if, for example, they were to go to the offices there in the, in the uh, rural areas and try to get service and they be told that you have to use this or you have to log on here, then by default, it would encourage one to log on to to have internet access. So I'm just saying we might take it lightly, but there's, there seems to be a direct linkage between uh, internet users and uh, internet usage, rural uh, productivity in this case, because now they are also reliant on the services that they get from the public sector. Because another thing we cannot deny right now is that uh, 
the majority of the business that the private sector gets, it, it currently is getting from, from the public sector, even though we are working towards, towards changing that. So thank you for that information. It says we need uh, to request uh, our government to look into the issue of computer appreciation a lot, which has been taken for granted, and the issue of internet connectivity. I know during, I think it was around 2000, 2005, somewhere there, there was high uptake of uh, computer literacy training and the issues of internet and the likes, but maybe it lowered. Sometimes maybe people might feel inferior to say, I don't know computers at this moment, and that might be contributing. So the government probably needs to look into this. Now, we are coming to the end of our first session. I'd like to get a closing remarks from our three panelists, still commenting on the issue of, is the Sutra ready for e-commerce after all the discussions that we've had? I'll start with the first panelist, Ndaja Polove. Thank you, Mentebi. Um, you know, um, it, it's, it, these are very interesting times. And I think, first of all, to, to thank you guys for having organized um, something like this uh, as an eye-opener to, to people who are inspiring to get into e-commerce. Um, we are ready. Uh, we are ready. Uh, I, I, like I said, I personally believe that uh, mobile money made everything possible uh, for someone to initiate an e-commerce business and start within weeks, it is possible. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Kolobe. Now, can we move on to our next uh, panelist? In this case, Dr. Kudu. Can you give your closing remarks? Um, thank you, Mayor. I think, again, like Dr. Kolobe has said, uh, SLS02, we are ready to offer e-commerce. On my side, I'll be talking in terms of the availability of infrastructure. I think we are quite confident that um, Lesotho is, is ready to offer to offer e-commerce. And again, I we just also did a, a very small, small internet study where we were, after the lockdown, just trying to find out from the uh, internet users this time, how has the connections being the stability and so on. And we are happy to report that about 61% of our users were saying the internet connection was stable with few disconnections. So with, with that, we are basically saying, I think we are ready to adopt e-commerce in, in that sense. But again, we still need a, a, a training or skills to, to be departed to the small businesses owners and even the market, meaning our our consumers. Otherwise, thank you very much, May. Thank you so much, uh, Now, can you also give your closing remarks and we move to the next session? All right, Kiale uh, Um uh, Like I was saying earlier, uh, that one, one of the people or the panelist yesterday was saying, don't wait until something is 100%, because if you're waiting for something to be 100%, then you won't even uh, get into the market. Um, we are ready uh, because we've got all the, uh, uh, the drivers that can actually push us to get into e-commerce. We've got internet, we have uh, uh, computer literacy, um, as, as small as it is, uh, but now people nowadays are, are using phones. My grandmom is about uh, 95 years now. I call her using WhatsApp. She's able to answer, we do video calls. She does the clips. So it means uh, uh, we, we have moved. If someone that age uh, can actually do things that uh, youngsters are doing nowadays, it means even the dissemination of information and the, the, the literacy is, is actually waiting for us. So yes, we are ready and we are ready. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have come to the end of our first session and I'd love to, to thank our three panelists that gave us detailed insight about Lesotho's readiness about uh, e-commerce. What we have learned is that as far as the infrastructure is concerned, we are sorted. What is left is with us as the people to decide to make use of the landscape. We have heard of the statistics regarding internet, um, in internet usage in uh, the various areas, urban, rural, et cetera. And, and we realized that it's unto us to decide we take on this uh, platform. And I should mention that the whole world is moving fast as far as e-commerce usage is concerned. So as Lesotho, we don't have any excuse not to hop onto the e-commerce uh, platform, which gives us access to global markets, uh, which, give us, which gives us uh, various opportunities. So having said that, we, we are saying the small businesses know that this is a platform for you to also make use, just like uh, the bigger businesses that we have in the country. I thank you so much, everyone, for this first session. We'll take just about five minutes, it's 10.20. At 10.25, we will be getting on to the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.